this one is called Wuthering Waves absolutely shatters expectations. I was actually curious in exactly how well is Wuthering Waves doing compared to, let's say, like Honkai Star or Genshin Impact. In terms of revenue, I, I know that obviously Hoeverse is still on top, but like exactly how well is Wuthering Waves doing? Let's see if Mr. Styx can tell us. We have a lot to talk about today. On the one hand, Zenla Zone Zero has hit a milestone, Wuthering Waves has hit a milestone, and Neverness to Everness. A brand new upcoming gacha game from the developers okay. of Tower of Fantasy just revealed not only a cinematic trailer. How many of you guys have played Tower of Fantasy? I don't have too much faith. I'm sorry if you guys are TOF enjoyers. I think that was like a pretty much botched gacha game that people played in the beginning and had a decent player base in the maybe, but then just kind of fell off and the devs kind of pulled the plug and said they were just going to make a whole separate game, right? Trailer, but also a full gameplay trailer. Before we jump into this, I do want to just briefly touch on Neverness to Everness first. I have my impressions, my reaction to the gameplay trailer up if you're interested. But more than that, I wanted to note, as you can no doubt see. Didn't Tiwa fall off? How do you fall off if you were never even on top? The fact that most of you guys have never even heard of the game is already proving my point. The official Neverness to Everness YouTube channel confirmed not only do they appreciate the insightful feedback from creators like myself, but they are going to be working with me specifically, Styx, okay. along with other content creators to attempt to build an ongoing dialogue that will make the cool. game better. It is rare that a developer openly admits to seeking outside constructive that's the new gacha game where like you can like people are calling like grand theft auto almost right because you can like drive a car and just do fucked up shit in it feedback and then taking this feedback and theoretically implementing it in the game to make the game better i think this is a great direction to take it i am more than happy to be working not directly with but alongside the developers here to attempt to make neverness to everness better cool. by providing feedback from you guys and myself telling them what they need to do what they're doing wrong and trying to guide them in the right direction to produce a game that we can all enjoy. I have active communication with them open on Discord. I'll be covering Neverness to Everness. Brother, this is supposed to be a Wuthering Waves video. You're fucking baiting me. This is an ad for you <laughs> working with the devs of NT Official for Neverness. Okay, congratulations. I'm glad that you're on board and you're making the game, you know, be uh, community feedback. You tell me about Wuthering Waves. Please. Be greatness, as long as they don't fall into the trappings that Tower of Fantasy fell into. Okay. Now let's talk Zenless. Zenless Zone Zero has officially surpassed $50 Damn. million dollars in 11 days. This is a monolithic achievement for them. I don't really have a reference point. I would need to see, like, how did Genshin or HSR or even Wuthering Waves do in 11 days. But 50 million, that's a lot of fucking money. Is that just from China? Or is that a global audience? I'm not sure. This was quite a bit under Honkai Star Rail. This was even further below... Genshin Impact, but... Yeah, okay, so it's not close to, you know, HSR or Genshin. But even, like, e even if you're, like, not close or didn't exceed those numbers, like, if you can be in the same range, like, the difference between Hoiverse products and revenue and, like, any other gacha game, it, it is staggering. If you look at, like, um, oh, there's, like... Uh, what was that specific? Sensor guide? I forget. There's, like, this report where there's gotcha revenues every month or something, and it's just kind of, like, staggering, like, if you see the difference between, again, Hoiverse products and every other gotcha game. That by no means means this is any less of an achievement. $50 Sensory million dollars is still think. above Wuthering Waves. $50 million in 11 days means that it's potentially going to hit $100 million over the okay. course of its first month. This is a cross-platform game, which means that revenue here is split between three major platforms, mobile, PC, and PlayStation. So if it made 50 million on mobile, that means it could very well have made 50 million on PC and potentially 50 million on console at a minimum. Really? So like when you declare 50 mil like this without giving a category, you can then assume because there are three separate platforms that each platform made 50 mil, is that really? That's quite the assumption to be making, but okay, I'm not really an expert at any of this. I'll go with whatever you say. Here, we're looking at at the hundred million dollars earned okay. in its first eleven days across all three platforms combined. We're looking at a potential two hundred million dollar opening month. They did state that it had a very big start, but much like Wuthering Waves, the revenue started to decline rather rapidly. Well, yeah, this is of course. a graph from App Magic. It seems like Chinese players and Japanese players are responsible for the bulk of the revenue. Chi Bro, this section is then the zone zero. Wuthering Waves starts at fucking four minutes. This is an eight minute fucking video.
I'm getting farmed so hard. Like, like, like the first half, well, first minute and 40 was a fucking plug about him working with Neverness to Everness devs. Then he's baiting me with zealous zone numbers that I don't give a fuck about. I just wanted what. You know what? I'm too deep in the ZZD. Let, let, maybe this will give us more broad uh, reference points to compare with, you know, Wuthering Wave later on. Okay, let's keep going. China, 47% of player spending. Japan, 27% of spending. That makes up 74% of total spending, which means global players really didn't spend much at all. Global players, for whatever reason, didn't seem to care. It's just the difference in culture, right? 47%, right? Japan is 27, China is 47, 27, right? Like... <laughs> It's just an Asian culture thing where in East, East Asia, right, it's, it's way more acceptable. The culture is to be like, spend money on games. It's worth it. It's fine, right? But in, in Western markets, obviously, it's not the same. So that's why, like, Hoiverse only leads into China. Even, like, the recent drama with Nuvolet's nerfs or some shit, didn't they, like, change that shit because the Chinese wills are, con like, um, complaining? Right? And China has the biggest market for Genshin. And same with HSR, I think, right? They're the they're gonna always vote with their wallet, so it makes sense. But it is kind of crazy to see like the difference in the Asian market versus the global market. Global being like everything other than Asia, I guess. You can see revenue for the game has dipped down at a steady rate at its lowest, which was about two days ago, three days ago as opposed to the video. This was at roughly $3 million. Genshin Impact apparently hit $90 million from player spending in its first 11 days. Honkai Cell had 108 million. HSR, 108 million in the first 11 days is crazy. $1 million dollars in its first 11 days. So $52 million is definitely less than half of what Star Rail generated. Yes, but even if it's less than half of what Star Rail generated, what's like below HSR and Genshin? What is the next closest competitor? I bet, they're, I, I bet they're gonna be in the 10 mil range or something. I don't know the exact numbers, but like I have seen the previous sensory reports shit. It's not even close. Genshin and HSR is always at the fucking top. Then the other games below it, the margin of difference is crazy. Generated, and it looks like this is not gonna go on to accumulate the same kind of revenue as Honkai Star Rail or Genshin Impact. Probably end up falling quite significantly below both. Although that by no means means that this is any less of a significant achievement for Zenless. I think this is a monolithic this achievement. Is great. Now, speaking about Wuthering Waves, because okay. I know a lot of you guys are interested in Wuthering Waves. And a lot of people thought Wuthering Waves was going to fail. Wuthering Waves sales passed $100 million in under two months. Which is... Doesn't seem that good if you compare it to that 100 point... Like 108 mil by HSR in 11 days, right? It may not seem good, but... 100 mil in under two months is still cracked compared to every other gacha game, right? That is absolutely crazy given this is mobile revenue only. As a Right, mobile revenue only, not considering PC. And like, here's the thing, right? You, you think that like, like straight up, do you think that after playing Wuthering Waves that most people play on their phones? Like, I think that a lot of people are more likely to play on PC, right? This is a combat heavy game. The dynamic playthrough, like it, it's gonna be more PC than mobile, right? And if the mobile revenue is this high, that's crazy. And here's some other things to be aware of. Wuthering Waves, intentionally launched with GN banner. GN being a primary DPS who's not a waifu, a husbando. To the and they gave free five-star selectors because they fucked up, right? Think about that for a second compared to the other games. It's not fair to, like, cause like, Wuthering Waves, they, cause like, not a lot of people are going to be wailing on the husbando compared to like a, a debut with a crazy waifu, right? HSR, Sele, she was crazy. Everyone spent, everyone got her. But Wuthering Waves, there was a Husbando launch plus a lack of incentive to pull or whale because they gave us five-star selectors and so much more generous shit. So if you take into all these different considerations, right? Wuthering Waves number, while it may seem lower than the competition, it's doing fantastic considering what it took to get there. I know it was Endless Zone Zero, the revenue between mobile. Yeah, a lot of Asian market plays on phone for many gacha games. I agree, but not Wuthering Waves. You can play, you know, you can play on your phone HSR, but have you tried, like even Genshin, it blows my mind that people play Genshin on their fucking phone. 
Like, how do you even do that? You can barely see anything. These games are basically PC games masked as mobile games in order to, you know, tap into the mobile audience and get them to normalize into spending through the fucking shops, right? That's why Genshin was so popular. It normalized, you know, people getting into the microtransaction models despite people playing through PC because they're like, oh, it's a PC client. We'll play on that. I'm not going to play a dumbass mobile game. But if there's a PC client for the mobile game on the PC, I might check it out. I think that, like, Wuthering Waves, I don't know the exact numbers, but I'll die on this hill. I bet a lot of people play Wuthering Waves on their PC compared to their phones. PC and potentially PS5 is going to be split right down the middle. There is no PlayStation release for Wuthering Waves right now, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. I have a video on Wuthering Waves PlayStation China Joy event participation on July 26th through July 29th. Before we talk about anything else, I want to take a moment to thank my incredible patrons over on Patreon and my YouTube channel members who allow for me to continue yeah. to do dedicated videos like this every single day. You guys are phenomenal and I can't thank you all enough for the support. Now let's keep going. A lot of people claim that Wuthering Waves makes at least double what mobile makes, which would set this at 200 million. To get a rough gauge here of the split. There is so much assumptions and speculations going on here. Cause all this, like you made like a 50 mil for ZZZ, but it's just like, all right, they got three separate platforms. So then he's saying, assume 50 mil on all three separate platforms, which adds up to maybe over a hundred mil. Sounds like a crazy assumption. And now like we don't have actual numbers other than just like Wuthering Waves made a hundred mil in under two months, but other platforms like, I don't know. It, it's so hard to actually understand what's going on because everything is just like assumptions. Here of the split between PC and mobile players, I decided to make. Like, I do not trust this fucking YouTube community poll with 12,000 votes, honestly. Like, what platform do you play Wuthering Waves on? 68% voted PC, 32 voted mobile. And honestly, I, I, I do agree that PC probably is more than mobile, but like, this is not a great sample size to reflect the actual audience playing Wuthering Waves, in my opinion. A community post just two weeks ago asking players what platform they played Wuthering Waves on. Almost 70% of our viewers, of my viewers, stated that they played on PC. That was 70% of over 12,000 people. This could mean that potentially there is an even greater split than 50%, which means that the revenue could be even higher than- Yeah, if we assume 100 mil just mobile revenue, and if we look at that 3070 split, and assuming that 12K sample size scales to the actual you know player base, then one could assume that PC sales, right, exceeded 200, 300, I don't know. I don't know, this, this, there is no actual math going on, so uh, again, it's all just fucking assumptions right now. 200 million, it could be 250 million. Regardless, these numbers are absolutely incredible. Again, these numbers are from Ballpark App figures. Magic. The article states, players in Japan have contributed 23% of the mobile earnings thus far. Wuthering Waves has surpassed 100 million in mobile gross revenue across Apple's App Store and the Google Play okay. Store according to App Magic. Major milestone has been achieved in under two months since the game's official launch on May 22nd with a fairly even revenue split across its biggest regions. So far, Wuthering Waves has found the most financial success in Japan, accounting for 23% of its mobile earnings. In close second, players in China have contributed 22%. Decent. Its mobile revenue with South Korean players 17%. Korea mentioned. The US market has contributed 17% percent too so china was actually much lower just a month ago that's interesting. So it's interesting to see that china has picked up which means they're happier i guess with how weathering waves is being handled right now i heard a lot of drama in the chinese fandom with regarding weathering wave release and how mad people were and i think there's a lot of people that were also kind of like upset and you know boycotting it because there are obviously a lot of hoyoverse fans too and thinking oh no kuro game's gonna release a game we need to like brigade against this so maybe people there was a lot of problems in the launch for sure a lot of performance issue a lot of stupid bugs right there was like even the whole japanese translation gone wrong so people got refunds for the fucking weapon that they people didn't even mean to pull on because that's not what it actually represented there's a bunch of problems, but like it's coming back. Now, according to At Magic, Wuthering Waves generated almost sixty million dollars in June alone, with the effectiveness of its new gacha banners apparent on a daily revenue level. A sudden surge on June six saw the game earn five point yeah. five million dollars on mobile, Yen Lin probably the game's most lucrative day on the platform. Yeah, coinciding with the new gacha banner featuring Yin Lin. I and exactly, right? When Yinlin dropped their first waifu, then people swiped their credit card. It's not GN. Remember, they botched the fucking launch by having GN and then having selectors, right? So in my opinion, they probably went in thinking, you know what? 
we're gonna tank the initial first month revenue we don't give a fuck what other reports are gonna say and you know say that weather wings have fallen off we would rather keep the players happy even during these times of a buggy release of the game and maybe not the best you know um launch of a gacha game by making them happy by giving them the resources giving them the pulls that they want so later on they'll actually start swiping and now with yin lin it's doing better and and this isn't even considering like jin shi right jin shi banner i'm sure did amazing and with chang lee coming in like literally tomorrow or something i bet the banner sales are gonna do even crazier and that in that 100 makes sense we all wanted yin lin i think the 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 game would have made significantly more if Yinlin was available at launch rather than Gion. Yeah. The next spike occurred on June 28th, coinciding with the version 1.1 update and another new gacha banner featuring Jinza. Yeah. That day, revenue reached 4.4 million. It actually made almost... So, wait, Jinza made almost... Ah, uh, I thought that Jinshi would be a little bit higher. Is it Jinsa? I didn't know it's Jinsa instead of Jinsi. Jinsa... I, I, I thought that maybe Jinsu would be higher than Yinlin, but Yinlin thighs are too much, I guess. As much as Yinlin on her day of release... Dude, can you imagine how much Chong Li is gonna yeah. make if Jinza made 4.4 million? That's crazy. Holy crap. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. That is that is impressive. Yeah. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and expect Chong Li is gonna be like all the way up here. Absolutely Maybe. breaking. I think that Chang Li's design is amazing. The whole like concept of her clothes burning off as you, you know, get into different gears with your forte gauge, it's pretty interesting. Uh, with the bad uh, the the trailer was a little lackluster, not gonna lie. Some people are calling it mid. The drip marketing with Chang Li, uh, maybe they could have done a better job, but in terms of aesthetics, I think she's one of the best looking so far. Maybe even over Yin Lin and Jin Si, so eh, maybe it's gonna be up here. Who knows? The graph. Although it seems as though Yin Lin's banner continued to remain fairly stable and consistent That's until really this good. period here. Jin Si's banner also remained fairly stable and consistent until this period, where it had a a less of a drop but then we're in this kind of like lull empty it is actually really impressive that this graph here for yin lin like notice how it fell fell and this is totally normal it's not going to stay like this from the beginning right everything is going to always follow this kind of curve but the fact that it stayed this high and even start to go up a little bit here that's very interesting and then the fall off here is fucking crazy i wonder what happened here but this I think that this is perfectly fun. I don't think there's any crazy drop off. Maybe the margin between this bar and this bar is bigger than you know the bars before, but still, I think this is a pretty good graph. Period where there isn't really much, I guess, necessity to spend money right now. So it makes complete sense as to why the revenue is down. Nevertheless, Wuthering Waves has achieved more than all the haters ever expected it to. They said the game was gonna fail. They, they, nah. they, didn't, they said the game wasn't gonna make $100 million. They said the game wasn't gonna live past its first month. But clearly, Wuwa and Kuro are continuing to prove everyone wrong, and they are still going strong. We're gonna see when Chang Li releases if this continues or doesn't. Either way, I'm happy that I get to at least work semi alongside Neverness to Everness. I'm glad that I'm a part of the, the again. community and it's doing so well. And then I'm a part of the Wuthering Waves community yeah, and that Wuthering yeah. Waves is doing as well as it's doing. I love when Happy games for do well. You. And I, 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 even more than that, I love when games do well, when people hate on them, expecting them to do poorly. And it is it, it is a great feeling to hear all the fucking cuck to Hoyoverse people say like, oh, boycott Wuwa, you know, Genshin better, like, you know, Wuwa could never blah blah, Wuwa's gonna fail, but it's just like, fuck you, it's doing perfectly fine. Just because one, and like, Wuwa doing f better is better for Genshin as well. Anytime they're direct competitors, it makes the other competition want to do better so that I don't get left behind. The consumers win at the end of the day. Even if you're a fan of Genshin, you should be praying for the success of Wuwa that Genshin will then attempt to try to do better and vice versa. And they prove all the haters wrong. Now, if none of this is of any interest to you though, absolutely no problem. I got you covered with two different videos on screen right now. There might be more up your alley. I have no idea what he just said at the end. So that was a fast outro, but guys, that sticks. That's my first video I've watched from his channel. He covers a lot of gacha news. Maybe all we can cover more of his content. He gives pretty interesting, uh, I don't know, information about just gacha stuff. I know that we're not a gacha channel. We're mostly, uh, you know, we're mostly a, uh, anime reaction channel but i think there's a lot of anime uh, overlap with weebs and the people that watch gotcha so give him a like sub to his channel if you haven't check out other waves if you haven't bye bye